Um, I think we are going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to give a couple of opening remarks briefly, and then I will kick it over to Willie. So sure. with that, thank you everyone for being here and good morning. I am absolutely thrilled to be back for a second year kicking off our Ring of Honor induction press conference. I also hope you share my excitement for the return of Bengals football as we are just a couple of days away from the team coming back and getting back to work for the 2022 season. Today, I am honored to announce the induction of this year's Ring of Honor class, offensive tackle Willie Anderson and wide receiver Isaac Curtis. They will join the legendary Paul Brown, Anthony Munoz, Ken Anderson, and Ken Riley in our Ring of Honor. Willie and Isaac are beloved players by our organization and special to my family, but they are going into the ring of honor as selected by our great season ticket members. We continued our voting process this year, which factors in season ticket members tenure. And we had another, another year of great participation and want to thank everybody out there who voted. We really appreciate your engagement and making your voices heard in this important process. Our season ticket members continue to have a great eye and memory for our greatest and most talented players who are also first class people. This year's Ring of Honor class is yet again a demonstration of two people who exhibited excellence on all levels. Both Willie and Isaac were first round draft picks selected to four Pro Bowls and have been tremendous and positive ambassadors of the Bengals after their careers. Willie is regarded as the best right tackle of his era. He was a finalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame last year, and we hope to see him in Canton very soon. Willie blocked for Corey Dillon's two NFL record-breaking games and helped set the club record for fewest sacks allowed in the season. Isaac was one of the best wide receivers in Bengals history. He had world-class speed and game-changing ability, which led to a rule change named after him. He is the granddaddy of the legacy of the number 85 at our organization. We look forward to formally inducting Willie and Isaac into our ring of honor at our Thursday night football game against the Miami Dolphins, September 29th. We'll celebrate them with an induction ceremony during halftime, and we really hope that our fans will join us in that celebration. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Willie to say a few words and take your questions. And again, I just want to thank all of you for being here. This is a really special day to celebrate Willie and Isaac. And we thank all of you for furthering their fantastic legacies. So Hude and Willie, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Elizabeth, um, for that grand introduction. Um, I'm just so honored. I said earlier today on Twitter, um, I was feeling a little sick today. Uh, well, yesterday I started feeling sick. So I canceled my flight into Cincinnati. I wanted to be up there. Um, but um, you know, I'm just honored to be able to go into a guy, to go in with a guy like Isaac Curtis, a guy who was, um, like, a, like you said, a trendsetter who molded the game of football and, and, and did things in bingo history that um, is folk folklore at this point. So to be a part of this class right here to me is a blessing. I give thanks and honor to God, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and I thank the fans. Like, I thank the, the season ticket holders for just remembering guys like myself and Isaac. Um, I said last year on Twitter that I, I wish um, the older guys in the era before me would get a chance to go in. And um, I think we did that last year and did it with Isaac. And, and hopefully a lot more of those guys get a chance because those guys set the standard for a player like me in Bengals history. Those guys that, that came before myself um, that played for the Bengals and, and, and thousands, well, hundreds of thousands of Bengals fans cheered for them. They grew up with them, and they knew and supported those guys before there was a Willie Anderson. So um, definitely hoping those guys can you know, get a chance to go in. Um, I have so many teammates to think. Um, There's too many to name, but, you know, guys that impacted my life as 
guys who played beside me, you know, guys like Bobby Williams, uh, Ken Blackman, Brock Gutierrez, uh, Mike Golf, Richie Brown, Levi Jones, um, so many guys. Um, uh, a guy like Joe Walters, who uh, my rookie year took me under his arms, under his wings, knowing that, that the Bengals had drafted me to probably take his position, but he never showed me any animosity, not one single time. And I try to give Joe Walters as much love and praise and respect as I can because he did so much for my career, along with him and um, Paul Alexander, who I was with, I was fortunate enough to have the same offensive line coach for 12 years. And uh, we, we both grew together. We grew in techniques. We grew in things we came up um, together with that the Bengals have been using for years while Paul was there long after I was gone. So guys like that, I um, want to thank guys like Marvin Lewis for coming in um, and, and, and giving us hope, um, giving us a reason to, to believe. Um, I think the Brown family, you know, people, people talk about, you know, I won't get into this too much, but people talk about the Bengals and different ways they perceive the Bengals to be. But um, that's not true. The, the Bengals took care of me in my entire career. Um, I'm so happy to be a part of it. I stuck with them. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm so in love with this organization, the things you guys are doing for us past guys. And I give a shout out to all our fans across the world. Like, if they're not, I mean, I can't, you know, I can't think of a more passionate fan base who stayed with us through thick and thin, um, throughout all the bad times and now being rewarded, you know, um, and, and got rewarded later in my career. But um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who voted for me, all our fans who get a chance to come watch us and support us for us. You know, we heard those cheers. We played this game. We heard those cheers, and we knew how bad you guys wanted us to win. And we basically were playing for you guys to, to get victories and to feel good on Sunday afternoons. So um, I thank you. I guess, um, you know, I'm just happy this happened for me right now. Hey, Willie, uh, congratulations. Uh, super proud of you, man. Um, wanted, to, wanted to ask you how it feels to go in knowing that a guy like Anthony Munoz paved the way on the field and now he paved the way in the Hall of Fame and you're following him once again. Has to feel good to be associated with him. No doubt. You know, when you, when you play offensive line for the Bengals, you know early on the standard was set by guys like Anthony Munoz. It was set by guys like, you know, um, Max Montoya and those guys, um, even before even for those guys, but Anthony definitely came on and set a standard throughout league-wide. So if you're a lineman, specifically a tackler for the Bengals, you know the legacy that Anthony set for you, and it's, it's a hard one to follow, but people are expecting a high level of play when you play for the Bengals at tackle because of Anthony Munoz. Thank you. Well, uh, congratulations. What legacy did you – do you think you set um, for the offensive lineman uh, of today? Just like I say, and, and following Anthony's footsteps, is, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard path to follow. You know what I mean? And um, I love to think that I brought a lot of attention towards the right tackle position. Um, I played left tackle my rookie year, but I was moved back. You know, I had a good rookie year too, but I was moved back to the right side because um, back then we had bigger guys that rushed over the other side of, you know, Guys were huge back then, man. You, you had grown men playing over that left defensive end spot. And um, we really didn't have any guys with the size and power to play that position. So they moved back over there, especially when we got Corey Dillon. So I would love to say I think I set the standard for right tackles because, you know, we, we were coming out of a decade where the left tackle position, because of a guy like Anthony Muñoz and uh, Lawrence Taylor, those guys that, you know, people got so enamored with the blind side. But my whole point was, if my quarterback turns his head a certain way, anybody can be the blind side. And I think that's kind of, that narrative is kind of going away now in today's football because you got more and more rushes coming from everywhere. But um, during the time I played, you know, it was a running football league early on. And once we got into the 2000s, we got Carson Palmer. The league turned to a passing league. So being able to be a dominant run blocker, if you look at all my rookie cards, they say dominant run blocking. No, no one ever talks about pass blocking. But – because that was a standard back then to be a dominant run blocker in the mid nineties, but football changed. And I would like to say that I evolved with football and became um, a dominant pass protector as well. Big hey, Willie, congratulations, my man. Um, that's a well-deserved honor to say the least. Do you think that, you know, you should be in Kent, you should be in the pro football hall of fame. And do you think that being the best right tackle of your era and now uh, being in the ring of honor, being inducted into the ring of honor. Do you think that 
that Canton is on the horizon for you? Well, I would like to hope so. You know, I would like, you know, I've said before, um, when I made the semifinal list two years ago and the finals last year, I just never thought those people would evaluate my career just because of, there wasn't a lot of limelight to it. But once you broke that, if you break down my career and you look at when pro football focus and pro football reference started ranking guys, you know, late in my career, my numbers late in my career from 06 to 08 were some of the best numbers ever. I tend to, I tend to think my fourth through sixth year, when I gave up no sacks and like two pressure, you know, if they were if they were evaluating and had analytics back then for linemen, I think it would be one of the all-time best, if not the best. Uh, pro football focus uh, ranked, me, ranked me the best pass block of the last 20 years. So things like that, you would hope they would pay attention to, but you just never know when guys get in rooms and we hoping our boy Jeff Hobson do a great job of presenting. And you just never know what guys are gonna um what they're gonna pick and choose. You just never know. I I hope and pray. Uh, likewise, I, I hope and pray for all our guys, like the two Kennys. Um, I think a guy like Corey Dillon deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I think Chad Johnson Ocho deserve to be in the Hall of Fame as well, because guys were the best at their positions. Willie, can you share with us how the Bengals and the team informed you that you were going to be inducted into the team's ring of honor? Yes, uh, Mike Brown called me about a month ago, and he said, uh, Willie, this is Mike Brown. I was like, Mike Brown, like, Mike Brown, Mike Brown, the Bengals, Mike Brown? <laughs> and he was like, yes. I was like, oh. And he just, he called me in to inform me and, uh, that I had made it. I was super joyous. Um, I was hollering on the phone to him, and, uh, you know, uh, true, to my, true, true to Mike Brown, he kept going straight past, you know, said what he wanted to say, he congratulated me. He told me, he's always told me things about myself. You know, my first Pro Bowl, he wrote me a handwritten letter um, thanking me for my, for, my, for my years of support and telling me back in 03, my first Pro Bowl, that I should, I should have been made the Pro Bowl years before. So having him call me and tell me that I've uh, been inducted was like, you know, coming full circle. And I, I enjoyed that very much, you know, so. Hey, Willie, uh, congrats. I'll echo what everyone else has said. Really uh, happy for mm -hmm. you. Uh, I'm curious, is, is there a game or a moment from your career that stands out as, as your favorite? I told Dan this yesterday. Um, I can think about a bunch of individual games. But unfortunately, early on, my, a lot of my individual games, best games came in losses. <laughs> but uh, for, for the team, that 2005 game against Detroit Lions, when we clinched the division, was my most memorable because I just I just remember thinking about uh, guys that handed out T-shirts and Marvin was like throw the damn T-shirts away like put them, put the shirts up like he didn't want us to get complacent but he didn't know like guys like myself and Richie Bram and Brad St Louis and Brian Simmons we had been on the team for a long time and we waited that was my tenth year I think it was Richie's twelfth year I think eleven or twelfth year we we just waited a long time for that kind of team success. And for that to happen, and um, you know, once my individual success started coming, uh, fortunately the team was winning. And uh, but that game, I, I remember because it was two franchises that had kind of been in the hole for a minute, and for us to be up and and beat Detroit, and we see all their fans going through, going through things that we went through um, years earlier, just for the team support was a great thing for myself. Uh, that 05 game, in which we clinched the division against against um, Detroit Lions. Willie, as a former player, what was it like watching the team in the season last year? Heart stopping. You know, every week, you know, you, you're holding your breath. And the ups and downs of, you know, the one thing you can't do is, is follow the biggest game on Twitter. Like, you, you, you're hard. You have a heart attack. You know what I mean? But uh, just seeing those young guys perform and seeing the love that the Bengals fans showed those guys and just being on a national platform of something positive happening for these guys, obviously with Joe Burrow, being the catalyst of that. But so many guys around him play really good football. And uh, just to see this young nucleus of guys um, having their turn to go way further than we ever did was, was, was a big a big um, honor to watch. And uh, we enjoyed it. Like everyone else, we enjoyed it. Willie, congrats. Um, I'm sure your phone's been blowing up ever since the announcement became public. What's been your, you know, the call, text, DN that kind of has meant the most to you since the news became public? You know, just my teammates, you know, we, we're in a group text. I started a group text with a bunch of Bengals from the 90s and the 2000s um, during COVID. We all kind of stayed in touch. So all my teammates just, just hit the, the group text messages. 
uh, congratulate me. You know, Andrew Whitworth message that he, he he texted me and called me and said he'd be working that game for Amazon. You know what I mean? He, he's so happy. He's so happy to be working the game. So I, I told him, man, do your boy solid. And I, you know, so uh, just hearing the teammates calling and texting and congratulating me because, you know, there's so many guys that I can think of before me that, that deserve this honor. So for me to get it, I take that in high regard. Um, I take it in very all seriously because there's so many guys, like I say, that can deserve this award. And I'm just so happy and, and thankful that I was seeing season ticket holders, you know, selected me for this award. Willie, um, interesting that typically the glamour positions get all the glory and fame, but Bengal fans, the first position where two guys are in the ring of honor are offensive linemen. Are you appreciative of just how much they value what you guys do up front and uh, recognizing you in this way? Damn right I do, because, I, because I've, I've said about over, over the years that unless you're alignment the stars in your team, like, you know, you're not going to have a successful team, you know. And ironically, the best team, the best bingo teams they've ever had, they've had really good players, or great players playing offensive line. So for the fans to, to recognize that and honor that, especially in today's game of social media and all the analytics that sometimes linemen could get overlooked because – if you're not a real football head, you don't really know how great of guys are playing, you know, statistical. So there's not really any stats for myself for you to look at except the stuff that pro football focus and pro football reference done, you know, later in my career. So um, so for our fans recognize that, they tell you they're, they're educated fans on the subject of offensive line play. And they know when this team is real good, we run the football and protect our quarterback. And, you know, our defense gives us turnovers, but it started with those big guys up front on every good team the Bengals ever had. Willie, with that in mind, with that in mind, what about L. Collins? What's your impressions of bringing somebody like that in and why that's so important? Because um, he brings in an attitude. And I had a chance to work with Lyle um, out in Dallas in 2018 when I was with the Cowboys doing some consulting work. Um, he just brings the attitude. He brings, you know, I said, we've had several guys wear that 71 jersey since myself. And there have been some good players like, like Andre Smith and guys like that. But um, I think I think Lyle brings a different level of um, athleticism, toughness. You know, if you watch him out of college, he probably ranked one of the top college linemen when he came out of college that year. But he played some guard and moved up the right top end. He's been playing at a Pro Bowl level. Like you look at last year, he had shut down numbers at, in the passing game. And traditionally, those Cowboy teams have ran the football with him at right tackle and running behind him the majority of the time. So um, he's going to bring a, um, a toughness and a mentality, I think, that will serve the being well this year. Hi, everybody. I'm just uh, jumping in here to say let's keep this only to a couple more minutes. Uh, we've got Isaac Curtis waiting to join. And so, uh, Willie, we'll ask a couple more questions and let you go. All right. Willie, what yeah, made you, what made you so good, Willie? And congratulations, man. Thanks, sir. Um, um, like I say, I, I just think I was able to evolve as a blocker. I mean, coming coming out of the '80s and, and high school and '90s, it was all about running the football. The stars were your running backs in the NFL in the '80s and, and '90s, mid '90s when I came in the league, and um, it evolved into a passing game. So, just being able to evolve to be to be a dual threat guy, I can, I can dominate the running game. I could be a shutdown pass protector. And those, those things I prided myself on. Now, even during the losing times, you know, we're throwing the ball 35, 40 times a game trying to come back. And you got to have self pride. You got to have pride that no matter what's going on around you, your guy's not going to beat you. You know what I mean? And I live down here in Atlanta, uh, myself at the Keo, and a bunch of pros are down here. So in my 20s, we'll be out. We go to, we, you know, we, we, we frequent the, you know, the nightclubs and everything that the guys did in their 20s. And I wanted to be able to help hold my head up high when I seen all these defensive ends that were from different, different teams. They would live here in Atlanta, and they would just know, yeah, you guys won the game, but you threw the ball 35 times, 30, 38, 40 times, and you just took the quarterback. So it came down to a pride thing to me, and I think I was able to carry that on uh, myself and guys like Richie Bram, uh, who played there for a long time with myself. So once we got good, that attitude turned into – Levi Jones, it, it turned to Eric Steinbach, it turned over to Andrew Whitworth, those guys around us, kind of picked up that, that level of, um, you know, 
self pride and self worth. Um, no matter what the game is doing, individually, you have to dominate. And, and that was my mindset. And I teach my, I teach my players that now at my academy. Like no matter what's happening with your team, individually, you do your part by dominating and being the best you can be. Willie, speaking of your academy, 15 kids earned college scholarships last year. How and why did that become your current passion? Man, like I told you the other day, man, you know, I, I used to pray to God when I was younger that Michael Jordan or uh, Oprah Winfrey would come down to Mobile, Alabama and just show us how to make it out. Like, you know what I mean? And, and that was my prayer all the time to God, man. I said, yo, if I would make it, I'm going to help kids do something. I didn't know what it was. And I didn't find out what it was until my own, I retired and my own son wanted to play football. And he told me he had a dream of playing college football. So I said, okay, you're way behind. I can't teach you anything about receiver. I'm on YouTube watching Ocho run routes and do training videos and uh, watching T.O. I'm calling T.O. and Ocho. So my son was a receiver, so I got him trained. And I put him on a really group of good guys, guys who loved him, guys who, who took time with him. And so when I got done, once he signed the scholarship to Georgia Tech, I wanted to make sure I, I start my Willie Anderson Lyman Academy to help kids out. You know what I mean? I, I do train pros, but my heart is in high school kids who, who started with nothing, um, came to us with nothing behind the recruiting and training for them. And like you say, we had 15, 15 kids last year signed scholarships. And my, and my goal is those kids finish college and the, 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 those are 15 families that don't have to worry about being, being in debt because they came to our, our academy took it serious and trained with us for a couple of years and the kids got rewarded with college scholarships. So that's in my heart, Dan. Um, I know the NFL media would pick up on it more if I train, if I train a gym full of pros, but I, I do train some pros, but my heart is in high school kids and um, having, having a guy like Paris Johnson as a ninth grader come live, come live in my house three, four, five years ago as a ninth grader. He lived with me for a week and a half. Now he's at Ohio State with a chance to um, have a big future for himself next season. Willie, uh, we can't thank you enough for spending the time with us today, and we'll let you go. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, who that? Who that? Congrats. Congratulations, Will. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Isaac Curtis is here uh, in, in the Zoom. Isaac, if you'd like to say a few words to open, and uh, then we'll let people start to ask you questions. You're on mute, Ike. Isaac, you're on mute. There you go. You got me? My yep. technical assistant, uh, my wife had to come in and, <laughs> and help me with this. <laughs> but uh, no, i like to just thank, uh, you know, congratulate Willie on his selection. I had an opportunity to see him play over the years, and uh, he was certainly a tremendous, uh, tremendous player and a great tackle and one of the all-time greats uh, that have uh, has been in this game. But uh, yeah, it's it's certainly an honor to to have been uh, selected um, uh, to the to the Ring of Honor. It's great to be here. Uh, it's it's uh, you know just appreciate the fans for. Uh, for uh, giving me the nod, um, it certainly uh, certainly was appreciated. So uh, it's it's wonderful to to be here. Hey, I congratulations, brother. Hey, thank you, there, Box. <laughs> uh, when you think about going in the Ring of Honor uh, with two people you admire, not only professionally but personally, and Ken Riley and Ken Anderson, does it mean that much more to you? You know, it really it really does. Uh, those are two. Two guys, of course, Kenny Anderson, who I who was my quarterback, who uh, was just a tremendous quarterback and tremendous help to me uh, uh, when I came in the league. You know, I was very fortunate to have a quarterback like that. And Ken Riley, um, you know, going up against Ken Riley uh, in practice every day, you know, it made me a better player and really, really helped me in my rookie year coming into the league. You know, I was kind of a green, uh, pretty green wide receiver, being only wide right receiver one year my senior year in college. So I had, I had a lot to learn. So coming in, you know, Ken Riley, Lamar Parrish, those guys really worked with me, but Kenny was really the guy that was there. Uh, when he would pick up on things that I need to do, or if I was giving away my pat pattern, my, my routes, uh, um, he would really come up to me, talk to me about what I need to do and, and uh, to get better and work. So he was, he was certainly an example on and off the field 
uh, Kenny was just a tremendous individual. I mean, just an absolute gentleman and uh, somebody who I've always, I've always admired him. And uh, he was certainly a role model for, for a lot of us young guys when we first came in the league. Thanks, Ike. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. In, in today's game, when receivers average 17 yards per catch for a season, everybody's all excited about it. You did it for your career, over 17 yards of catch for your career. Do you sometimes wonder what kind of numbers you could put up if you had played in today's era of football as a wide receiver? Yeah, it would have been, it would have been fun. We had some, we had some good, uh, some good years, um, you know, uh, some good, some good teams, but uh, you know, we just kind of clicked and, you know, like I say, you know, Dave, we had a, we had an offensive line that gave Kenny, uh, that gave Kenny uh, time to throw, you know, that's, that's, that's the big key. Everything starts up front and, uh, and then we all have to do our jobs, but uh, yeah, it would, it would be uh, it was a different game when I first came in the league, you know, it was a game where, you know, defensive backs, they can hit you and cut you. And, you know, as long as the ball wasn't in the air, you were, you were free game. I mean, I would have cornerbacks roll up on me and, and cut me, uh, especially in the, uh, our first playoff game against the Dolphins, you know, they would cut me or a cornerback would come up on you and try to bump the outside linebacker, come try to take your, your legs out. Um, so it was kind of a, it was a kind of, you battled to get up and down the field. Uh, so it's, it's certainly a wide open game now. And, and uh, it would certainly be fun to play in this league. Now I'm looking at the guys, uh, you know, what they're and some of the, you know, what they're accomplishing and some of the statistics. You know, that, that was that was tough back in, the, back in the days when I first started. If you caught 40, 50 passes, you caught a lot of passes. These guys now, they're catching, you're catching 100 passes. Uh, you know, we weren't even targeted that much. But, um, but it would be, it'd be fun to play in the, uh, play in the league now. Um, you know, and it's certainly a fun league, and it's, it's open, wide open. It's a passing league, but uh, it, would, it would be fun. And who knows what, uh, what, 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 what kind of statistics we can have uh, in today's game. Isaac, congratulations. What makes, when you watch uh, the trio of uh, great receivers that the team has now and TV and uh, obviously Jamar and T Higgins, what makes them so great when you watch them? I think they got a, one, they got a really great quarterback. They got a great system, but they, they are, all of them are very talented in their own, in their own right. You know, Lamar, I mean, uh, Lamar, uh, Chase, I mean, he's just a tremendous, tremendous uh, receiver. Higgins, they're all, he's rangy, he can go get it. Uh, the, all of them are just really, really got the size, the speed, and, and just, uh, you know, they're, 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 very, uh, they're very smart receivers. They're, they, they know the game, but uh, they, they're, they're, they're great receivers, you know, great talent. If, great I can, if, if I can follow up, Isaac, you came in as a track star out of San Diego State. You had the speed, but what made you a great receiver of your era? Well, I tell you what, I, I was actually, I ran track, but I was actually a football player first, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it, it was just, um, it was just really the hard work the study coming in, working with Kenny, uh, sitting in the, in the meetings, uh, looking at film, uh, studying, uh, getting tips from uh, guys like Charlie Joyner, Chip Myers, when I first came in there, some veterans that had been around that really, that really helped me uh, understand and learn the game and really understand how to study and, and how to, uh, you know, how to, and how to prepare, um, you know, for the, for the game and, and to the point to where, you know, you, you, you're not thinking anymore. Things are starting to come. You're reacting. You know, you, not, you understand what your job is. You understand the offense, learning the offense and knowing what you're, what your responsibilities are. You're learning the defenses and learning the different coverages and uh, knowing how to recognize them when that ball is snapped. Because a lot of times they're 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 um, you know they're they're trying to uh, uh, cover up the uh, coverages, uh, disguise coverages, I should say. Um, and so that get to the point to where you know you're not you're, you're reacting and not thinking about it. And uh, that's pretty much it. Isaac, congratulations. Um, when the Bengals announced they were coming out with the Ring of Honor last year, just what did that mean to you and what did that mean to the former teammates you spoke with as well? Well, it really meant a lot, you know, uh, because, you know, talking with a lot of the teammates, I talked with a lot of guys, uh, uh, you know, Reggie, Reggie Williams and, 
and um, just just a number of the guys. And it, it was really tremendous because it was something that we really needed. We, we've had a lot of really great players that have come through uh, the Bengal org organization. Uh, so this was really something that was really needed to really highlight uh, the careers of some of the players that, that we've had uh, over over the years. And so it was uh, it was it, it was time. And uh, I think the guys uh, really looked forward to it and, uh, you know, look, look forward to uh, it going in the, into the future. Isaac, if I could get a question in, um, how did the, how did the over the head spike take place? What, how did that all develop? I mean, you see guys spike the ball now, but you had that unique, uh, when you scored a touchdown, you went over the head. How did that all come about? That all started actually back at uh, San Diego State when I transferred there in college and I moved to wide receiver. Um, you know, there was a bunch of guys, a bunch of us kind of sitting around uh, talking. I was the, the new guy kind of on the black, just uh, transferring in my senior year. And the guys were talking about, well, if they score, what are they going to do, how they're going to spike the ball. And one of the guys said, well, what are you going to do? I, and I just said, I'll probably just hand it back to the referee and that'll, that'll be it. You know, he says, no, you have to do something. So they tossed me a ball. I kind of dropped it over the back of my shoulders. I said, well, that's going to be it. That'll be, that'll be my, my spike. And I, I kind of brought that into the NFL, but uh, it, it, it kind of stuck. I, I always said, you know what? I didn't want to give the defensive backs any more of incentive uh, <laughs> to tear my head off than they already had, you know? Uh, so I didn't want to show them up and throw spike the ball in their face. And so I just casually dropped it behind my back and just kind of said that was it. I think they got the message. Hey, Isaac, uh, congratulations. Uh, I'm curious, you know, I, I assume you probably found out about a month ago, like Willie did uh, since that moment and today's announcement. Have you allowed yourself to kind of visualize what September 29th will be, what the ceremony will be like and what your emotions will be? Do you think you'll get emotional? It'll be very emotional. I think it'll be emotional. Um, you know, I, I know my, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Like I say, I was there last year when, uh, when the Ken, Kenny Anderson, Ken Riley went in and it was, uh, and it was just so exciting. I was so excited for them. And I just thought it was such a great honor. And, and I said, you know, if it ever happened to me, it's just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, I will be excited about it. You know, I, my, my wife usually tells me I don't get excited about much of anything. It doesn't seem like it, but she says, you really seem to be excited about this. Uh, and it is really exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And like I say, I really appreciate, uh, appreciate being, uh, being um, selected uh, by the, uh, by the fans. You know, Isaac, first off, congratulations. And, and kind of to touch on that point, what, what's it like to kind of, to see the franchise maybe do more to, to recognize some of the older players that, that played for the franchise for a while and kind of seeing that push also extend to guys like Ken and both Ken's and yourself and, and Willie in terms of trying to you know make a push for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, I, I think I think it it really means a lot, you know, that what what uh, what's going on and and especially for the push for some of the guys, you know, like Willie Anderson, Ken Riley, um, you know, uh, you know, guys like Lamar Parrish, uh, you know, just really to to put a spotlight on some of the guys that uh, that really had some great careers in Cincinnati. Um, and 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 show their show their talents and show what they've done and what they've accomplished. So uh, it, it's it's certainly well welcomed and uh, and I'm sure everybody uh, everybody that's uh, that's involved in it, whether whether you've been nominated or not, I think uh, is excited about uh, about what they're doing and just highlighting some of the some of the some of the talent, some of the players that have come through Cincinnati that are that are worthy of. Uh, you know, of, of, of being uh, put into the Hall of Fame. Isaac, uh, you've always had this cool demeanor. I mean, we, we've all known you as, as I get kind of a cool demeanor. Was it something that was innate in you or just kind of evolved over time that you'd like to just approach life with a very even keel? No, you know, I've, I've always kind of been been that way. I've kind of kind of been kind of, you know, even keel, just kind of relaxed. You know, I try not to get too high, too low. Uh, it's just, it's just always kind of been my, uh, been my personality, um, uh, the, the whole time. It's nothing that I, that I come up with or anything. it's just, it's just, it's just who I am. You know, I'm just uh, kind of a laid back, relaxed kind of guy. You know, I do get excited, but I guess I'm not, but I'm not that guy that jumps up and down, you know, but, uh, I show it in different ways.
Well, thanks to Mildred for validating your excitement on this particular one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, there's no question that you are the Iceman. That's what you, that's what you were called, Isaac the Iceman Curtis. Man, you were just so, such a cool customer. What, well, the thing about you that was so spectacular is not only the world-class speed, but the ability to get in and out of cuts. I mean, the way you ran routes, most guys with that world-class speed, they have to, they can't, you know, choke it down and get in and out of cuts like you did. What, what do you attribute your route running to? I mean, was it a thing that came naturally to you? Did somebody help you with that big time? What was that about? No, well, you know, I was, I was pretty fortunate when I, when I moved, uh, transitioned to, uh, to a wide receiver. Um, and like I say, I was a running back uh, in high school and in college my senior year. So I was, I mean, I, I, was, I was a football player first. So I, I was used to running. I was used to cutting. I was used to making moves, uh, you know. But uh, when, I, when I really, when I came to Cincinnati, like I say, watching Charlie Joyner, watching Chip Myers, these guys, and watching them run routes and watching them set up defensive backs and how they set up their routes, you know, I, I really, I, I learned, really learned a lot of that from, from watching those guys. I did have the speed, but, you know, I kn always knew that, you know, you had to, you had to keep things under control, especially, especially with your, with your, with your cuts, but uh, they were a tremendous help. And uh, like I said, when I first came to Cincinnati, having Bill Walsh uh, there as well as my, as the offensive coordinator, receiver coach, um, he was a tremendous help. And at San Diego state going there with Don Coriel and some of the receivers and some of the, you know, that offense, you know, so that's, that's really where it started. But uh, I think, you know, I, I, I really gathered myself. I tell you one time, one thing that, 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 that happened is my, my after my first, uh, my rookie year and I played in the Pro Bowl, uh, Paul Warfield was, uh, was there with somebody that I always idolized and watched, watched because he was always so smooth and ran such great patterns. But I was excited being a rookie there, and there, here's Paul Warfield, somebody who I've always, who I've watched and uh, admired as a, as a player and as a person. Um, I was running routes, and I was running out. I was excited, so I was full speed, making cuts, slipping, and all this kind of stuff. I went back, and and uh, Paul Warfield, he just kind of looked, he kind of called me over. He says, you know, he says, I, you know what, you got a lot of talent, but you know what, you got to remember, always keep your feet under you. You know, and that was just something that I always remembered when running routes, running this, and just uh, always, always try to keep my feet under me. And uh, and uh, you know, I just got better as uh, as the years uh, as the years got went by. I learned that you can't beat everybody in this league with speed. You got to learn how to run good routes and set them up. You mentioned Bill Walsh, Isaac. You mentioned obviously Don Coriel. What about? Paul Brown and the influence he had and, and having the faith in you to draft you when he did and, and uh, make you a foundation of the offense. Oh yeah. I was, I was, like I say, I was pretty excited. I was very excited to get drafted and come into Cincinnati and, and having uh, both uh, Paul Brown and, uh, you know, and Bill Walsh there. I mean, it was a tremendous, it was a, this is a tremendous education to, 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 to learn and work and be around, uh, be around those guys, especially Paul. He was just, you know, you really put everything in perspective. I mean, it was just, you know, it was a business and you had to come in here, you know, you had to take care of your, your business, handle your business, you know, take approach this game and this league as a, like a business, you know, everything that you do on and off the field. So um, I, I was very, very fortunate to, uh, to have, to have uh, to play for, uh, for Paul Brown and have a coach uh, like that, that uh, meant so much to the league and had, had contribute so much into the NFL. Any more questions for Isaac? Yeah, I had one more there, PJ, if it's okay. Sure. Uh, Isaac, when you think back, uh, you know, so many people give credit to those along the way that have helped them. Is there someone who might be surprised at how much influence they had on your success? Um, yeah, I think so. You know, I absolutely, I, uh, I, the, my old, uh, my old high school coach, I, I would probably say, you know, I think some, everybody has, uh, somebody way back in the past, but, uh, but he was just kind of a mender, somebody that was always there, somebody that was, you know, that, uh, was there, was there to talk to me and, and mentor me. And I could always go to him and advice and ask him questions. And he was just a, just a tremendous person. He was, he was, just, he was almost like a, 
you know, like a, a, a another father, you know, to to uh, to myself, uh, Coach Coach Baldwin. But uh, but he had a big influence on me coming out of high school. You know, um, you know, he kept me on the narrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've got one last one in my mind, Isaac. It, it, you're such a great player. When when did you know? Or who did you play against when that game was over that you had a lot of respect for and, and you basically handled them? I mean, was there a guy that was like, man, I, th this guy I know is a, star, is a stud and you went out and competed against him and won the battle. Was there anybody like that that kind of uh, in your mind told you I belong in the NFL and I can be great in the National Football League? Um, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, of course, Pittsburgh had a lot of great uh, – great uh, defensive defensive backs with the blunt and, and all those. We, I played a lot of guys that, that were in the league. And I, I, one thing that I did have, I had a lot of confidence in myself and I felt that I could play in this league. And I felt that, uh, you know, um, once I kind of get my feet under me and, and learn this offense, learn this system and, 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 re, and, and understand the coverages and understand, you know, where I'm just reacting and not thinking, I felt that I could play, I could play in this league. Um, I didn't feel that there was very many people in this league that could run with me, you know, so it was just a matter of really just, just educating myself and being a better player. And, uh, and, and, and that's, uh, and I think that's all I, I thought about. I didn't really particularly look at any one person and, you know, or play or against anyone that I felt that, um, you know, validate whether I belong in this league or not. I think from a, from just a confidence standpoint, uh, I, I had I had confidence that uh, that I had the ability to to perform and play in this league. Any other questions? I'm sorry, Dave. Go ahead. No, I'm just going to say congratulations. Well deserved. You were the you were the man, Isaac Curtis, the man. Well, thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure out there playing with you. Uh, we had such great. Teammates, you guys were you guys were wonderful. Isaac, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll let you go. Congratulations. All right. All right. Thank Congrats, you. Thanks for Isaac. having me. Congratulations, Isaac. All right. Thanks.